but I love making liquor. I've introduced to it by a man named Werner Valentine. I still think highly of the man to this day. But uh, my daddy always told me in the funeral home, he said, son, he said, don't look down your nose at these guys that come in here. It looked like you just walked out of the weeds. He said, a lot of times they're old liquor men. He said, them old liquor men, they'll buy a solid copper casket, which is a high dollar funeral, about the best you can get. And he said, they'll pay you cash money. They won't, they won't dead beat you. He said, now there's a lot of preachers out here. They'll want the best of everything, but they don't want to pay for it. So <laughs> who's that tell you is a better person? <laughs> well, there's that, you know. <laughs> I probably won't get to leave this earthly realm in a solid copper casket. <laughs> no, they're too expensive. All right, there's no more questions. I promise. I'm going to try to tell this story. And please, please be patient with me. Tell me to quit, hush, if, if it gets too, too ridiculous or out of hand. But this story is about the flu town moonshine doctor, as was told to my dad, D.C. Ramsey, by my great-grandmother, Odie Parks. And we call Odie, Oda, actually, but we called her Maushi. Maushi was everybody's favorite. And the, this story is about the flu town moonshine doctor and lessons learned. So in the late 1800s, early 1900s, flu town was on the south side of the French Broad River up where the falls is up to Big Creek. Big Creek was since renamed and it's now what is Del Rio. Big Creek is, is Del Rio now. Okay, flu town, a lot of people live there. Most of them upstanding citizens, you know, for the most part. Uh, they, like everybody else, they had a town drunk by the name of Jughead. <laughs> Jughead was pretty much harmless, but they had him. The teacher that taught school at flu town was Mr. Jess Huff. He lived on the north side of the French Broad River and he, he took a boat every morning across the river to go to Flutown School to teach. And if the river was up, Jess had to make the five mile walk around across the bridge. But anyway, doctors, medicine was, was rare. You know, they didn't have a lot of it. And moonshine was used for medicinal purposes. And they didn't have any, and uh, they, you know, people got sick. It was used a lot for upper respiratory distress and whatnot, but they didn't have any moonshine, but they had a resident. His name was Mr. Jim Brewer, who had been known to make a lot of moonshine back in the day and to make very good moonshine, but he had quit years earlier. So the people of Flutown decided they would approach him and ask him if he would make them some moonshine so that they could make their medicine. Well, he told them that I don't make moonshine anymore, I have quit. They said, we will help you, we will furnish everything, we need this to make our medicine. He said, I will talk to my preacher, and if he says it's okay, I will. So. A couple days later, he come back, said his preacher had given them his blessing, so to speak. He said, as long, as long as you're making it so they can make their medicine, I don't see anything wrong with it. So, Blue Town residents, they went in, pitched in together. They bought enough copper to make a one, one barrel copper pot, all the connections, worm. They furnished the ingredients. They uh, made the malt. Now, a one barrel pot is 50 gallons. So you're looking at six to seven gallons of liquor off of a one barrel pot run. So they put it in Mr. Brewer's woodshed. He only made four to six runs a year, just depending on what they needed. Uh, usually it was corn and barley, and sometimes if they had it, a bushel or two of fruit, they would make brandy, but they used it to make their medicines. Mr. Brewer did not even benefit financially from this because if anybody gave him a goodwill donation, he gave it to Mr. Huff 
to give to buy supplies for the school children with. And Mr. Huff was also supplied with the moonshine medicine to administer to the school children as they needed it. <laughs> My great grandmother, Moshi, she gave, I've had many a double tablespoons of it. You know, God, I loved her. <laughs> <laughs> but you know everything was going well everything and, and occasionally mr. Brewer would give Jughead a little taste just to keep him from having the shakes and going into the DTs well Jughead got it in his mind that he went to mr. Brewer and wanted him to sell him some moonshine and mr. Brewer told him he said Jughead I don't sell moonshine so this made Jughead mad, and he ratted him out to the law authorities. Well, to Mr. Brewer's surprise, two deputies showed up, went straight to his woodshed, confiscated his steel. Even though it wasn't in operation at the time, booked him into court. Court day was set. All the people in Flu Town went to court with Mr. Brewer. And my great-grandmother, Moshi, she was appointed to be the spokesperson on their behalf for Mr. Brewer. So, courtroom was packed, but the judge was terribly sick, and he was going to dismiss court. And he asked uh, Mr. Brewer if he had any representation. He said, only myself, Your Honor, and the people here at Flutown. And Moshi stood up and asked if she could speak. And he said, yes, you can speak, but I'm going to dismiss court, but go ahead. And she told him, she said, Your Honor, she said, we're as much to blame as Mr. Brewer. We conned him or asked him to make this moonshine for us. We helped him. We made them all. We've made furnished the materials. So in all honesty, if he's arrested, we all need to be arrested too if you're going to do this fire. So he dismissed court immediately, and he said, we'll be back in a week. Well, she went home, Moshi, my great-grandmother, and she whipped him up a quart of medicine. <laughs> she sent it to have, she sent it with someone, along with instructions, had it put in his mailbox. Well, fast forward a week, court's back in session, all the Flutown residents are there. Judge, he says, I don't know who put the medicine in my mailbox, but it worked wonders. Thank you. And he raised his hand and he said, lessons learned. <laughs> so about that time, the door opened up and Jughead walked in and asked if he could address the court. And the judge told him, he said, sir, court's in session. He said, I know it is, your honor, but he said, I'm the reason that court is in session. He said, I'm the low down SOB that reported Mr. Brewer because he refused to sell me any moonshine. He said, he does not sell moonshine. And when he did not, it made me mad and I reported him. Had I not done that, had he sold me some, which he don't, he wouldn't be here today. And he said, I need to make this right. So judge acknowledged Jughead's speech or confession. And, and Jughead, he said, also, Your Honor, I'm like you. Before he sat down, Jughead said, lessons learned. <laughs> so the judge knew at this point that Mr. Brewer was not making moonshine to sell. He wasn't doing it for profit. He was doing it for the people of Flutown to make their medicine with. So he dismissed the case. And he asked Mr. Brewer if he had anything to say. And he said, yes, Your Honor. He said, thank you for the verdict. And he said, I guess this learns me to not be so nice to a drunk. <laughs> and then Mr. Brewer, he looked at him and he said, lessons learned, Your Honor. <laughs> lessons learned. So before court was adjourned, the judge asked the two officers to meet with him in chambers. So everybody went back to Flu Town. Next day, Mr. Brewer went to his woodshed, and lo and behold, there was his steel bag. And a note was, was taped onto it or laying on it, whatever, however. And it said, 
We are returning your medicinal supplies, sir. We certainly apologize for any inconvenience or embarrassment caused to you. And in parentheses below that, what do you think it said? Lessons learned. So, you know, that's lessons for all of us. My great-grandmother, Maushi, her recipe for this tonic was one quart of moonshine, one cup of local honey, because local honey has local allergens in it that will help your immunity system. Allergens from somewhere else, honey, don't help you. The juice from two squeezed lemons and rock candy. That was, that was her recipe. I've had a lot of it, you know. My great-grandmother, Moshi, bless her heart, listen to me, she, bless her heart, Moshi lived to be almost, within a few days, 105 years old. And she enjoyed flu town medicine those 105 years. And Moshi died in her own home, in her own bed, in full, all of her faculties about her, surrounded by the people that she loved and loved her. So, what does that tell you? Lessons learned. I hope you enjoyed this story.